Hi everybody, welcome to the show. My name is Amanda Ostrander. I am a teacher turned homeschool mom and this is Raising A to Z, a place where we talk about all things homeschooling and today I'm going to be reviewing the Brave Writer program. So the Brave Writer program, it is a program that I have had my eye on for a very long time. It is a program that was created by a veteran homeschool mom. Her name is Julie Bogart. She has been homeschooling her kids for two decades and then started the Brave Writer program. And she's also the author behind the really famous homeschool book, The Brave Learner. Uh, so she's just a wealth of knowledge and ideas. And one of her big focuses obviously is writing and literature. And I have, been in love with the Brave Rider program since I heard about it and wanted to try it desperately, but was waiting for my kids to kind of get to an age where I felt like they would be ready for it. And so this year I decided to give it a shot. So Brave Rider is very interesting in the sense that it is a very much literature based approach to writing. How you're learning your things in your mechanics of like spelling, grammar, sentence structure, writing, all of that is all through literature. It's all through reading good books, answering questions about good books, learning from good books, doing copy work and spelling from good books and using that as your foundation for practicing all of those things. So essentially every month or every packet that you get has a like novel study packet you have this packet and then you also have to go and source out the book that goes with it so whether you're going to find it at your local library you use bookstore or purchase it new you need to get the book to go with the novel study and then you just need a regular old notebook after that you're set to go um you can do this with multiple kids if you want uh at this point i'm very excited we've been doing it for a month and i'm thrilled with the program. I'm going to walk you through how it works, what we're doing with it, and why I think it's such a great program. For this month, we pulled uh, The Heartwood Hotel, which is a lovely little book by Callie George. And basically every day I do a little bit of reading and the program walks me through exactly what to do. So there's a cover page. I will tell you the cover page is supposed to be orange, but I ran out of ink on the very last page and didn't feel like reprinting it. So you're going to see that it's pink, but it is actually supposed to be orange. Like all the dart things are, they're orange. Okay. So dart is the level for ages eight to 10 and I'm just loving it. Anyway, so it starts immediately with a quick start guide. So you can read this with your kids right away. It walks you through exactly what to do. Um, it tells you the spin and spiral, which is kind of like the scope of like what you're gonna cover in this unit, which is nice. And then it gives you, first off, this is great, cultural context. So you can actually talk about like, it gives you like, where is this set? Why is this important? Things you might need to think about before you start reading. Um, like for example, in this one, which is basically, just so you know, the story is based on, there's animals in the woods, there's a little mouse and she comes upon a hotel that is run by other animals in the woods. And she eventually like starts working there and finds out that it's a great home. Basically just the book. Okay. Um, so it's going to talk about, it talks about how some animals are predators. Some animals are prey. Um, some animals eat both. They're carnivores, there's herbivores, there's omnivores. Like that's important to the story because the animals still eat their regular diet. And so animals that are carnivores are not really welcome at the Hartwood Hotel right? It talks about the food that the animals like, which is important to the story. And then it talks about hotels and what what hotels are, how they are important to the story, a little bit of history about them. We've learned that before you've even read the first chapter. So then you read your chapters. So basically the only goal is that every week you will have a site passage, which will tell you you have a path, like a primary passage. So for week, week one, it's chapter two. So before week one starts, you have to get to chapter two. You might have to like spend your first day reading or start the week before, but like basically you've got to read up to whatever that section is before you start the week. That's the only thing you need to think about. You read your little chapters out loud to your kids. This is a read aloud program at this level. 
and then there is your your week one work so we have our week one so this week's uh little passage is inside another marvelous sight and much more lively one rabbits chipmunks squirrels hedgehogs birds even a lizard and largest of all a badger that's the passage and so then we have what we can do with it why this passage so it talks about why this passage is chosen we can talk about that and it has these big juicy questions these are questions you can ask your kids about the story as you're going through so then what you do is this becomes copy work and this was a, a very interesting thing for alexi she has basically finished all of her curriculum for the year which has left me in a bit of a tight bind because it's only march so we pulled this out because it's the last thing that we were working on and it's been interesting because this is definitely like a step up and a level up from what she has been doing but the first thing that she had to learn was that she has to copy the passage exactly not necessarily spacing which is what her primary focus was on for some reason she has to focus on things like which words are capitalized where the punctuation goes um the spelling of the words so she's that has been interesting for her that because she's been so good at just like rushing through things and finding patterns that like when she was doing spelling words spelling words often come in like lists that are like similar words she would like figure out the pattern and then was able to spell all the words because that's how her brain works um so now having to use words in their context when there's not a pattern she definitely made a lot more spelling mistakes the first time that we we did this, which was interesting, which is what I wanted to see. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to see her struggle a little bit because I wanted to, her to be able to be pushed. And so it was great. It's really, really good. So she definitely has over the last month of doing the program has improved a lot. So now she understands that concept. But if it's not something your kids are used to, it might take a little bit of adjustment. So she writes paragraph or sorry like a little passage and then it says what to note and so I actually pull out a whole bunch of different colored markers or um, highlighters and I have her highlight these different things as we go through so in that three sentences we talked about indentation so the first line was indented why do you think that is can you highlight that for me then there was exclamation points find them in the passage highlight them with a different color Okay, why are there exclamation points? Let's read this section. Then we go down to commas, then there's lists, then there's homophones. So those are all the things that we did the first time we did the copy work, day one. Then it tells you exactly what to do next. Like it's literally walking you through. So this is this week, this is what we're doing. So here's your spelling words. You're working on the spelling words. Then it has some like activities based off of the, that passage. So we're talking here, we talk about like plurals. So we're making plurals. You can do this or you can skip over, like there's quite a few lessons per week. So if you wanna like do one or two, you can. If you wanna do all of them, you can definitely do that as well. So Lexi is super good at putting plurals. I skipped over that. But then this was an interesting, we had to find the superlatives and comparatives. And so like, sweet what's like the next step up from sweet it's sweeter next step up would be the sweetest and how those are like words that not only describe but compare that was a very interesting lesson for Alexi. she really enjoyed that and then this is the second part where it talks about how sometimes words have need more than just like an er and es est you have to actually change it add a word um there's punctuation spotlight so that would be like the next day you would do the copy work and then you could do the next day and then there's like an activity so you do your copy work every day and then there's an activity for the week and at the end of the week you would be doing like a spelling you do like a little mini spelling test and then that's the end of the week so basically it's like copy work what you copy work and what you note copy work and one activity copy work and another activity copy work and another activity copy work and spelling spelling test you're done and you've been read aloud to every day and then you move on to the next week where you're doing the same thing but it is a different passage so by the end but before you start week two you have to get to the next passage which is chapter six so not a very difficult also this book is super short so like not very long chapters and again we're write our passage then we go through and we do the I do the highlighter thing it doesn't say to do the highlighter thing but like honestly that's the first thing she pulls out down she just gets all the highlighters 
in a row and was like ready to go. Um, and then the next week, next day we do the spelling, sorry, the copy work and the first thing, the copy work and the next activity. One of them, like one of the writing activity was making a list of your own and like, what would you put in a list? Okay. So your list needs to have a title. It might need to, it has to have a colon. It has to have some kind of marker of what the list items are. Are you going to be like uh, a dot person? Are you a dash person? Are you a numbered list person? Like it's, it, it was, it, it was great. They have all of the passages at the end. So like you can actually like give the kids this. And then they also have two different kinds of spelling tests. So they have this called French dictation style. French style dictation, sorry. And basically it is the, it's the passage, but certain words have been removed. So instead of the kids learning, like they have to learn the passage, which is a very interesting way of like doing um, spelling. As you can see, she had a couple of mistakes, which is probably one of the first times she's ever had a mistake. We were learning. Um, and then week three is like a regular spelling. And then week four is called a reverse dictation. So I haven't quite finished it yet, but like, so you have your passage and it's incorrect. So there's words that are incorrect. There are um, grammar things that are incorrect. So like, for example, there's no, there's no capital. There might be too many periods. There might not be enough. There might not be any commas. And so then they have to like fix the spelling and the grammar in that passage that they've been working on all week which is great. So every month also has like a writing activity. So this month's writing activity is to use um, onomatopoeia. So words that make their own sound, pop, zing, zoom, that kind of thing. They're going to do their comic books. They're gonna make like a little quick little comic. And then they're going to add onomatopoeia or words that make their own sounds into the text. So that's kind of the focus. That's the main writing like activity for the month. And then a huge part of the program is actually, which we haven't gotten to this part yet, not gonna lie. So Alexia doesn't know it, but every, at the end of the month, you do one day, which is they call book club day. And essentially is you are doing a kind of like a little party to celebrate your novel. That is like a key part of the Brave Writer program. So it's bringing in all these elements of the book. And then you're making like a little themed party day to go with the book that you just read. And so every book has activities suggested. You don't have to do all of them, but you can do some of them. So they are like, here, we're gonna like, you could decorate like Mrs. Prickle's kitchen. So they're like, there's a green tablecloth, there's wooden bowls. Those are things that we talked about and, and see in the book, right? Um, there's different things that you could do. You can do like heart stones. You can make a peppermint lip scrub. You can make, uh, do some acorn stashing. You could do a woodland obstacle course. There's edible acorns. Like it gives you suggestions of how to have like a little party celebrating the book that you've read and kind of pulling everything together, which is super, super fun. Um, so we have been loving Brave Writer. It is definitely a great program. It is probably one of the most comprehensive, solid reading writing programs that I've seen that is not focused solely on workbook. Like it is not about filling out the checks in a workbook. It is about using literature to connect spelling, grammar, writing, and reading all together. So it is a solid, solid program. I'm so happy that we have actually been able to use it this year. And the nice thing I like about it is that you can try it out relatively inexpensively. So you can purchase just one unit, just one, one book study, which is a great option, especially if you don't want to do it all the time. If you just like, I need something different. I need to try something different. I need a, you can pull it out and it's a novel study right? Like it's, it's easy. So you can purchase a one-off. It is $19.99 and you get, like I said, the whole package with everything inside that you need. And all you need to add is a notebook and source the book. If you can get it from the library. Awesome. If you can get it from a used bookstore, fantastic. Um, I had to purchase this one cause my library didn't have it, but it's, it's fantastic. And then you can buy just one and try it out. Like you don't have to buy the whole program and be like, it's not for me. Like it's just one. You can also go for their, um, their next step up, up in terms of pricing is the best option would be your five for four. So if you buy five singles, 
you get uh, the pricing as if you bought four. So basically you get one free and you can go through and pick and choose whichever five units you want to do. So that's an option as well. That's probably the option we're going to do next because we need to, <laughs> like I said, Alexis is out of curriculum and I need to figure out what she's going to do for April, May and June. So yeah, we'll probably get a couple more of these. And that's a great option because you're basically paying, like I said, for four, but you're getting one free. So there's that. The next option, which is the year long program, which is one of their best sellers. It is a nine novel selection and it comes out every month. I believe it starts in August, mid August, like the second week of August or whatever, you get your first um, email with the novels that I sent directly to you. You do have the book list ahead of time, which is nice of all the books that are going to be coming, but you don't get the novel sent, like the units they sent to you until two weeks, like two weeks into August. And then it's like the second week of every month you get your novel study. And part of the reason that is the year long program is typically almost always um, new content. So it's brand new novels that are coming out. So you're basically getting exclusive brand new content. Then after it's been released, I think for a month or two, it goes up and you can purchase just the singles. So the stuff that's currently in the singles section is the year long program from the last couple of years. So you can buy them individually. And if there's like one book that's in the year long program that you really, really want, you might have to wait for it to become available and then purchase it later. Um, but they come up, they've had some great, great books on their list. Like, they're going to release their new, they usually release their next year's lists in, I want to say June. I think like, I think last year was June 1st, June 2nd, something like that. Um, so they'll release what the next year's books are going to be. And I have never been disappointed with what's on their lists. In fact, I've often pulled some read alouds that we've done already from their book list because they're such a great variety of books there's a great variety of characters there's some like at the dart level there's like animals there's people there's people from different countries there's some like mystery there's fantasy there's different like characters of different color like it's it's just like it's a very nice wide variety of books and a wide diversity of, of books and characters and story themes and it's great. Now, if you purchase the full year and you're like, hey, I really don't like that book or we've already read it, you do have the option of switching it out. And there's like a form you fill out to switch it out for one of the other singles if you want to do that. So you aren't necessarily stuck with all nine of those novels. If you're like I said, you've already read one or you don't think it's appropriate for kids for whatever reason, you have the ability to switch one out as well. So that comes in and it is it is a little bit of a, because you're buying the full year, it is a little bit of a reduced price. But those are basically your options for purchasing Brave Writer. Um, in terms of who would benefit from the Brave Writer program, there are age level brackets from age five all the way up to 18, which is another great thing about the Brave Writer is that it is, it is something you can use for many, many years. Quill is the first level, which is ages five to seven. Uh, it's a lot of like for pre-readers and kids who are not really strong at reading. Um, essentially, it is mostly picture books and it's a bit of a different format than what the DART program is and what the next pro like there's a big switch after um, Quill into kind of more advanced stuff like the DART. DART Arrow um, and the ones after are similar, but just like more advanced as they go on. But there is a big difference between Quill and the rest. But if you're looking for something you can do Quill with your younger kids. Dart is ages eight to 10. Then the next one is Arrow, which is like recommended for ages 11 and 12. After that, it's Boomerang, which is 13, 14. And then Slingshot is the last one. It is 15 to 18. And it is like a rough age range. So if you have a kid who's like not a super strong reader, you can go down a level and it's there's still lots of really great titles in there. And if you have a kid who's maybe a little bit more advanced, you can go up a level. Like it is, you're not locked in because your kid is a certain age. This is also a great program. If you have a variety of kids or a couple kids in a close age, you can pick one and do it with a couple of them. Currently, Zoe is not able to do the actual work in Brave Writer, like the actual like dictation and copywork and spelling. She's not there yet, but Alexi is loving it. But Zoe 
loves the book. So Zoe's very happy to sit around and listen to it. And then she likes to answer and like participate in like the juicy questions, like the, the plot questions that get asked in every, every week. She likes to be able to participate in that part. So even though she's not being able to do like the actual physical writing part, she is able to do this even though she is only six. So you can kind of incorporate other elements in as well for your younger kids and they get to just listen to it. Um, Dart is designed as a read aloud program. They do recommend, I believe for Arrow that you also read aloud with them. Um, and then after that, it comes becomes a little bit more like independent, but it is just a solid program. Um, if you're looking for something or like I said, if you're looking for something that is very literature based, it is a great option. If you're looking for a novel study that you can kind of throw in randomly because your kids are bored and need something new, it is a great option. And I think it is just a really solid program in general. So that is my recommendation. Um, I currently have to go and get a couple for Alexi. She picked a few from the list. So um, I'm excited. She's excited. And I think that the Brave Writer program is a great option for literacy for a lot of families. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this, make sure you subscribe and click the bell. Consider becoming members to our YouTube channel where you get all kinds of really cool benefits and bonuses. And make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and you can see the Brave Writer program live in action. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.